Charlie. La 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 la. Don we know our gay apparel. La 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. La 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 la. Hi everyone! Look. Isn't she a cutie? Oh my goodness, I love her. <laughs> I still have some buds to go. Oh, here. Pink Brish, Tolumnia. Photobomb, pomegranate, Tolumnia. Another photobomb. But the focus today is on my little Phalaenopsis acquisition. I thought she was so cute. And I wanted to share my new purchase with you. She is tiny, 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 but my goodness, these blooms. They're so pristine and clean and white. I love it. Let's look at the detail in her lip. Look at the size of that. Considering she's a mini, those are massive blooms. I love her. Oh, but the thing is that we need to get her out of the pot. And there was another thing I was focusing on and I didn't recognize when I bought her. By the way, she cost me three euros 50. I was so focused on the roots to make sure that she is healthy, that there's no damage. I don't see any kind of root burn on the velamen surface or anything like that. But yeah, I didn't notice what they had done is, maybe you can see this, I hope you can see this. In the center here, they cut off a leaf right in the center. That's naughty. They shouldn't have done that. Yeah, that's better. You see that? They cut that leaf off. Ugh, so I don't know if there's any kind of rot issues or what is going on, but I thought she was adorable. I just couldn't resist. Needless to say, as with any kind of Phalaenopsis, we need to check the media because this is compact. Can you hear that? I don't even know what it is. There's stuff on the top. I don't know but she has to come out of this media because, you know, the roots in there don't have anything, anything to work with. There's no aeration. It is just, it's probably the seedling plug that's been in there since day one, but dang, that stuff is tough. Well, not only that, she needs a bigger pot, but I need this pot. Now, it's gonna be super interesting how I'm gonna get this out she doesn't feel rooted in <laughs> at the base down here, so there is a hollow space. It only feels really, really tough up here. I'm going to give it a go and I'll take you along for the ride and just let's keep our fingers crossed that I don't break this pot. <laughs> I have a flat tip screwdriver and I have golf shoes spike removal tools where you stick it into the holes and then turn. That's what this is for, golf shoes. And I have my cute little Phalaenopsis pot and I have a very, very unstable base. So I don't know how much pressure I'm going to need to apply. I'm gonna try and do this on camera. These are not your conventional repotting tools, but hey, there's always a first time for everything, right? And this may go quicker and easier than I anticipated. It may not. First of all, I need to find a way in. I'm just gonna really, really support my pot with my finger on the other side. And I feel really bad doing this to my little Phalaenopsis, but you know what? She will live. My Rapiculus Lelia might not live if I don't deal with it right now. But I always wonder how hard and tough they make it for people to repot their little fowls with this compacted media. I can't even tell you what it is. I'm thinking of getting a hammer actually and just giving it a little bit of a bash along the edge. Maybe my screwdriver will take care of it. <laughs> we'll see. You see, the whole point of this exercise, not to be forgotten, is to remove this pot 
in one piece. The media feels like Akadama. <laughs> Cemented Akadama. Oh, that's getting easier now. We found our way in. You see that? You see what they do with us here? Huh? Every time we get an orchid in, we have got the same situation. Trying to save an orchid even though she's just brand new. Oh, they've even done packing peanuts on the bottom. Well, 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 well. <laughs> oh, look, we're gaining ground. Dang, poor little baby. No wonder something was wrong with the leaves or the single leaf at the top. This poor little thing had no chance of survival. This is tough stuff. But you see, got packing peanuts. All right. And you know what? They were so stingy. They didn't even put all the media to the base. I suppose that works in our favor because this stuff is tough. Whoop, got a big chunk out there. How are we doing? How are we doing? Are you coming out? I wonder how many roots I've destroyed up to now. But yeah, stingy, stingy. Not only do they tightly compact the orchid, they can't even be bothered to invest in a stake. No, they just pack that media on the top so tightly for it to remain stable in the pot and then they don't even fill the whole pot. Goodness me. You come up with everything here, hey? Let's try this. Can we just pull you out by now? Very gently, of course. <laughs> now that we've done all this, very gently see if we can dislodge her from her pot. Maybe we can give it a little bit of a squeeze. I gotta be careful, don't wanna hurt the pot. Nope, not budging. We'll have to keep going. But I'm glad I didn't have to bring out my hammer after all. Had a few repots this year of 2021 where the orchid was so rooted into the pot. A hammer was required. Now, we have come to the packing peanut. Fantastic. Let's see how much more we have to do. What is going on down there? I can't get ahead of myself though. I need this pot. I have to keep telling myself that we're only, you know, so far in. We don't even know what's going on all the way underneath. Oh, they buried her too deep. Wow. These people, I tell you, they are naughty. Check this out. And you know what? Let me show you. Goodness me. This is a new one. Look. The flower spike is not even on the orchid itself. <gasps> I've been robbed. The flower spike was separate and on top of that a cut leaf now nah, this orchid is not going to make it no matter what you think no matter what you say no way is this orchid going to make it look what they've done that is just robbery and now that i've taken her apart i can't take her back and ask for a refund or a replacement they're going to think i did this what a bunch of crooks. My word, this is a first. I've never seen this before. Wow, okay, but hey, look at this. We have ourselves a pot. Now the only thing with this pot that I need to do, I have to put two little holes in, and for that I will use my Dremel, and I'll be back to show you the candidate that's going in here, and then fingers crossed, that the sacrifice of one 
will guarantee and provide long life and blooms for the other one, you know? This is, I just hope so anyway. Yeah, Dremel, I'll be back. And we're back with an itty, itty, teeny, weeny. How much more smaller can you get? Lelia Bloom and Shiny Eye. That is currently producing a fabulous root. I don't want it to grow into the hob material because that's just going to make things more complicated. So because the plant that this came off of is doing really, really well, I'm going to risk potting it up this time of year so that I can maintain that gorgeous root to some degree, hopefully entirely. Look at this thing. Oh gosh, I just touched the root tip. Got to be careful. So here's the plan. Teeny tiny pot. And from my dirty lecker, these are the shards that I've picked out thinking that one day I may need to crock or fill up or, you know, support a base. And suddenly these tiny, tiny rubbish shards look enormous <laughs> for this little pot. But I'm going to use them anyway because they're going to go in as crocking. As with any other ridiculous Lelia in my collection, I crock the bottom of the pot. Now, next step, we need to get a mix of Akadama in there and just slow the pace down a little bit, seeing as we're dealing with something so small. I just must not get ahead of myself here. The Akadama is there for the purpose of wicking, of course, but I want to intersperse that with some terrarium grit just so that I have a lot of aeration especially this time of year when it's a little bit cooler and this little bloom and shiny eye just needs to get that root into some media so I don't lose the plant entirely. I do not have a tag for this orchid because I know what it is and this is not a guarantee that it's going to make it. However, <laughs> if I were to have a tag, I would be putting the tag in at this point in time just to make sure that I'm not jiggling the orchid around once she's in place. And I would always do that using my holes in the back as my marker as to where my semi-hydro holes are so I, when I move the pot around the shelf, it doesn't spill everywhere. I can lean it this way and move it, which of course, in this case, I'm not going to do because she is tiny. And once she is in place, she's going to stay in place. So I am not removing any of the old roots. But what I'm going to do is fill the top with something a little bit drier than Akadama because of the time of year. And for that reason, I'm going to use Terrarium Grit just to... Whoa! just to make sure that I don't rot the base out. And that for the time being is plenty. That root is in contact with the Akadama, that's all I need. But in order to stabilize her now, I'm going to use very, very, very small lava rock, which already looks proportionally very, very large based on the size of this whole little project. But trust me, this lava rock is small, which I picked out individually from a bag, separating everything out back in the day, ready to go for eventualities like these. <laughs> I have to be very, very careful. I'm way too excited to get this little bloom and shiny eye into a pot way too excited. I have to slow down, take a deep breath, and not forget how delicate this little orchid is with its one single root, and uh, how cute I just think this whole little setup is. <laughs> so, just a little bit more. The lava rock, again, is only there to stabilize the orchid in the pot. And every single movement, I am very mindful of the fact that there is one root tip 
being jiggled around in that pot at this point in time. Not good, but needs must, I think. So, <laughs> what do you think? If I even were to put a tag into this, it would just rise up like phoenix out of this pot. We shall watch and observe. One final step though, one final step. We need to water her in ever so gently, not coming anywhere near that new growth. The Akadama in the pot will do everything for us. <laughs> also to assess the color of the water coming out of those semi-hydro holes. I don't want it to be too dusty in there. And even though the Akadama has been washed, a little bit of a cleanup won't hurt. And the water is somewhat running clear at the base. That is when I will stop. Because what I need is humidity. And that root needs to get down into that Akadama. And that is all there is to it. I am in love. I am in love. Little bit of a plate. Because now she is going to go where she was with the other ICU orchids that are somewhat progressing but that is the place that she knows best. And that is where she has bright shade, good airflow. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> I hope that she will develop. And then we'll have this as a reference video of how did she do then and now? <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate that you stuck with me if you've made it this far. And if you're still here, Fun fact, today is Dia de los Inocentes in Spain, 28th of December, which is April Fool's Day for many countries in the world. We celebrate ours on the 28th of December. So happy Dia de los Inocentes, translated the day of the innocent, the gullible, like me. <laughs> but none of what I just showed you is a joke, with exception of the first part, of course, the potting up of the Rapiculus Lelia, I am all serious about that. So, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.